This video is going to quickly teach you how to do a small electrical soldering job. For this purpose, we're doing it on a battery connector that is made for a large scale RC car, but almost any type of electrical soldering is gonna be the same. Now it takes a couple minutes for a soldering iron like this to heat up, so you do wanna go ahead and plug it in. And after a few minutes, she should be ready. This is a pretty worn out soldering tip. I ordered some new ones, but they are the wrong size, so those aren't gonna work. I'm just gonna have to make do with this one for now, but these can wear out pretty quick. You also really should have you a stand for it so that you're not laying this down. You wanna make sure that you're using rosin core solder. That is specific for electrical. A lot of times it'll actually say electrical solder, but don't use lead. With this being a battery and a pretty powerful one, we have to be careful to not let the lead short out. So I'm just gonna do one at a time here. Once we solder these pieces on, in case there happens to be a little bit of metal showing and also just to add a bit of rigidity, we're gonna put some heat shrink on these too. A lot of times you have to put heat shrink on anyway just to help cover up any metal that might be showing, especially if you're just attaching two wires together, which I'll show you a good method for that in just a minute. But um, don't forget to put that on because it's really easy to get ahead of yourself. And of course, once the wires are connected, you can't get that on any longer. And we're gonna be inserting the wire into this cup. So we have, to, we have to strip the insulation away a little bit. Not very much as you can tell. So we're gonna strip it down to about here. And there we go. To help keep the strands of wire together, I like to just give it a twist with my finger. And this is a horribly cheap one, but it does help some. I think it's called a helping hand, but you can put your pieces in here and it'll hold it there while you work. The goal is to heat up the piece of metal that you're trying to attach the wires to. So if you were attaching two wires together, this is the way that I like to tie wires together for a strong connection. And then you heat the wires up and kind of let the solder melt to the wires. And then it's as strong as a connection as can be when it comes to wiring. Strong as can be. So as this is heating up, we're just gonna fill this little cup full of solder once it's gonna once it starts getting there we go now the solder is melting in there okay keep that on there so it stays hot shove that in it and then pull away hold your pieces in place and it'll be cool enough to let go in just a few seconds that there should do it All right, and again, since we're dealing with a battery, we need to go ahead and put this on this end because if we go ahead and clip this and start working on this and these two leads touch each other, that'll short the battery out. And with these, that can potentially cause a fire and a relatively big one. So we make sure we have the right side, which on this, it's the round one, not the D-shaped one. We're gonna take that and just push it in. They're pretty tight, so they need an extra tap. All right, that got it. We wanna make sure we cut this next one at about the same length. And still be careful, because you can see the metal up there. If this, if this lead accidentally shoved up in there, it'd be bad news. Get this one loaded up in our helping hand. That one was quicker because the soldering iron's already much hotter than it was earlier. As I told you not to do, I forgot to put some heat shrink on there. Luckily, that size actually may slide over this. Nope, that's not gonna go. Now make sure you don't try to slide heat shrink tube on there when this is still hot because it'll start shrinking and make it much harder to get over that. Get that in there. Bigger size. And as soon as you know you're done, unplug that soldering iron. Let it stay in its holder or in another safe spot for a while so that it cools down. Shove this guy in here. 
Again, do another pull test. Alrighty. Slide your heat shrink in place. Just extra protection, that's all it is. I'm gonna use my brand new heat gun. You can use a lighter, but this works much better. Now that you're a master solderer, if you could leave a like on this video, that would be super helpful. Thank you so much for watching.